fucking joke's a joke, right? If it's funny at the start, I can't get fucking out. You got to take the glass off, mate. I can't, I can't get it off. But hey, it was funny for a while. The neighbours, I can't get the fucking box. I can't get the fucking box off, buddy. I can't get my, I can't get my fucking arms out. Help me! Pull the fucking. Mate, get the fucking box off me. I swear to God, I'll fucking... I'll, I'll kill you if you don't get it. Mate! Get... Get the fucking box off me. I'll fucking... Get the box off me. You put love in a box. You say that in order for love to be present, that it has to be X, Y, or Z. And if X, Y, Z is not happening, not taking place, then there is no love. However, love cannot be limited at all whatsoever. Love comes in the way that it is most needed not in the way that you want or expect it to. Your expectation of love, or how love should be, limits it. So you can complain that and say that your twin is ignoring you, or doing whatever you feel like complaining about in that moment, and because they aren't giving you love in the form of attention or communication or physical gratification, then it's not love. Then there's no love. Then it doesn't exist. They don't, they're not the one for you. They're not your twin. What you aren't acknowledging is that there is a purpose to them ignoring you or whatever else they may be doing. Why? Because there is a purpose to everything. What are they drawing out of you by ignoring you? What are they drawing out of you by not responding to you? What are they drawing out of you by whatever else it is that they're doing? That is what you must find. That is what you must identify. And that is how you must look at it. You put a limit on what love is when it has to be a certain way. That is trying to control how your twin loves you. Control in any form will get you nowhere very, very, very fast. Right? Sometimes love is discipline. Sometimes love is ignoring someone until they finally wake the fuck up and get their shit together. Sometimes love is telling you to fuck off and that they don't want to be with you so that you finally begin to focus on yourself and not on them to heal and love yourself. Right? This is like a pretty big level of awareness. So if you're sitting there watching this saying, that's bullshit, then you have some healing work to do to reach this level of awareness. And that's okay. But it is the truth. So if you only accept certain means of love, then you limit love and the way that, it, that love can come to you and the way that you receive love. If you only accept love in the form that you think love should be, then you're trying to control it. Love is free. Very, very free. Try to capture love. And see how fast it escapes. It cannot be controlled. So you have to accept that love is present because you and your twin were created that way. You were created together. There is a tremendous amount of love always 
being exchanged between you regardless of what you can see or experience at this very moment. They are loving you in the exact way you need to be loved. You have to heal your upsets. The mirror exercise identifies through their actions where you are upset so that you can heal it for yourself. You want to stop feeling upset and hurt? You want to stop fucking suffering? Learn the mirror exercise. And this has nothing to do with talking to yourself in front of a mirror. That's something different. That's an affirmation technique. You know, people say all the time, oh, I know the mirror exercise. For, you know, I've known it for years. I talk to a mirror all the time. Congratulations. That's not what I'm talking about, nor is it healing your core wounds to loving yourself. So it is your perception of love that can be distorted. Your ego distorts your viewpoint of love. If only you can accept love by your twin from like speaking to you or touching you or you can only accept love in like those ways then you limit the infinite amount of ways that you can receive love from your twin. Ways in which you're being given clear direction to move you forward into union. You aren't receiving that love. You aren't receiving that direction by only saying that it ha love has to come in this way. So don't twist what I'm saying here. Speaking to your twin, talking, touching, etc., etc., are all very rich and pleasurable ways to love someone and to be loved. However, they are not the only ways. So that's your job, is to see the love that is present in your union. That is the twin flame journey. If all you see is hurt or fear or sadness or grief or loss or whatever, then you're focused on the illusion that your ego is feeding you. And that prevents you from seeing the love that is actually present in any interaction, any given situation. <sighs> What an, what an outrage, right? Like I'm sure some of you will throw your arms up in the air in disbelief because, well, my twin flame did this. And what, what do you have to say about that? And where's the love there, Mr. Smarty Pants? Well, if you're stuck in the upset, then all you see is the upset. You won't see the truth. You won't see the love. It's not until you work through that upset that you see the truth. That's what the mirror exercise is for. Right? If you're not working through upsets, then you're staying stuck in them. And they just keep reoccurring. And that means, like, no matter how long you've been on this journey, you aren't making any progress. Because time isn't a factor here. You're either working through upsets, making forward progress, or you're standing still. Right? It's your choice what you want to do. It's your life. But it can be an exquisite life instead of a suffering mess. So click on the links below the video or visit asoneguidance.com directly. And let's get started on ending your separation and bringing you into union with your twin flame.